Okay, Nate. Um, let's talk a little bit about the John Deere classic very quickly. Then we can kind of move to, um, to John Rahm and some other stuff we want to discuss. So we were not here for clubhouse picks last week for the John Deere. Sepp Straka won the tournament. How'd you do uh, in the John Deere? How uh, locked in you, Sepp? I was not locked into Sepp. That's for sure. Um, I mean, Sep played great. It, it was just another week where it felt like we were like a little bit too early on Sep. I feel like we'd been talking about him. We'd been sort of optimistic about his chances. And then, you know, he came up and won a tournament, um, which I'd kind of been thinking he would do soon. Uh, so, you know, good for Sep. Uh, I like watching Sep play. It was a good tournament, and he played a hell of a final round um, to get it done there. So, and, you know... Brendan Todd really had a chance there, just kind of three putted like the 16th hole, I think it was, and and pretty much effectively took himself self out of contention. But but credit to Seb Straka for sure with the um, with the with the closing final round that he had. I mean, he kind of just came from the clouds uh, to to finish that thing up. And you know, we had we saw a lot of the young guys are are, are really sort of making a move. Lud Ludwig Aberg shot 63 on on Sunday, and you know the sort of pipe train continues for him. Uh, as, as you know, he just sort of got his status at the conclusion of the college season. So, you know, some good storylines, some interesting younger players. Peter Quest is another one uh, that we'll see a lot more of soon um, as he sort of is, is embarking on his PGA Tour career. So a lot of young guys getting good, solid starts to their PGA Tour careers. Uh, good for Seb Straka, but not uh, good for me uh, financially, no. Been a rough season for you financially just in general. Oh, just, just atrocious. Last couple so of weeks, you've been time. texting me saying, you know, oh, I threw a little bit money on Saturday on uh, Justin Rose or so or whoever, just to have a little bit of action. And that, um, that's not a good sign, Nate. It's, it's not, it is not, but you know, we're working on it. We're working through some things. we got a lot of tournaments coming up. Uh, and, you know, I love when the, when the, tour uh heads across the pod i love i love watching links golf and, and european style golf and we'll talk about that um you know in a little bit too uh but this is one of my one of my favorite times of the year i think i think the open championship is probably my second favorite tournament of the year uh after the masters so yeah we're all getting ready for the open we're all excited about that there across the pond um links golf offers a new challenge for handicappers we'll talk all about that for the scottish open <laughs> as well happy to see sep straka win a tournament we have been talking about him really since February because he's an elite ball striker and he can feast in um, birdie fests, I think, in some mm -hmm. sense of the word. That was a weak field, and so a weak field means guys who have been playing pretty well for the year are going to have an opportunity to um, win a tournament, whether that's a Denny McCarthy or Sepp Straka or um, an, any number of these guys who have really – I mean, even we saw that with um, Keegan Bradley earlier this year, and that was sort yeah, of a definitely. weak field, but there's – there's some people in there as well. So, uh, you know, happy, happy for Sep. I think that everybody was a little bit surprised. I didn't see, any, see him on anybody's card. So um, it's not as though we missed an easy one. I was still uh, hurting about some of the ones we missed earlier this year that seemed to be so obvious. I don't think this was. No, this one, this one wasn't as obvious to me, um, for sure. I mean, it makes sense in retrospect. This is definitely a type of course that Sep would, could play well at. I mean um with with his ball striking skill uh particularly his iron game but yeah just just whiffed on it i i don't even know what his price was but i'm sure it wasn't awesome either no i'm sure it wasn't i don't know what it was either um but he's been playing well enough we're in a weak field he's probably floating around at 35 to one maybe that's kind of what i figure yeah 40 to one yeah i doubt it was 50 to one which would have been a nice hit for him um or for anyone who bet him but you know we'll see and in the coming weeks, it'll get a little bit more difficult for these guys who fly under the radar to win a tournament. I think that that's going to be true for the Scottish Open. One guy who really is flying under the radar right now is John Rahm, who we haven't really seen a lot of lately. Um, what's going on with John Rahm? Why isn't he playing the Scottish Open? Um, you know, he must just he must just be taking this time. I, I wouldn't be shocked if he was just acclimating to the time change in Spain, to be quite honest with you. Um, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, but that would make a lot of sense for for him. Uh, he just hasn't played that much, really, like since the majors started. You know, he won the Masters, played, you know, 
the designated heritage the week after, and then he went to the Mexico Open to def- to to defend there or or just to play there. Um, and then he's really only played majors, you know, in designated events since then. Since then, you know, Memorial and the Travelers. So it just looks kind of like a slow time in his schedule where he's just geared up for majors. Um, like I said, I haven't checked his social media, but but it wouldn't shock me if he was in Spain um, right now, and just you know, just taking it easy. I think that. There's a part of me that thought when the live stuff came out that he was really considering making the jump at that point or when the live stuff came out. And some of this feels like him just kind of wanting to take a little bit of a breather and just sort of get away from everything for a little while. He doesn't need to play all the time. And the Spanish he guys doesn't. don't play as much as the American guys. That's just true. One, because they don't live in America. I mean, he lives in Arizona, but... Um, he is not from America and they just take a different approach. You know, Sergio only ever played maybe, maybe twice a month, you know, on the PGA yeah. tour. Um, those guys don't, they take a different approach and Rom doesn't have to work on his game at this point in his career. And at this point is, I mean, you always have to work on your game, but uh, the way he's playing right now, the amount of wins he racked up earlier in the year, I'm sure that he feels pretty comfortable with where his game is. I'm sure he's playing all the time. If he is in Spain, adjusting to the um time zone change you know that's 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 a real adjustment i was just in spain um for vacation that's where i was spain and morocco it's a six seven hour time difference from where i am for him it's like almost 10 hours since he's on west coast time and uh that's a real adjustment um and look having spent some time in madrid and malaga and valencia some other places in spain uh i don't blame him I mean, I, I don't see how yeah. anyone in Spain gets anything done. It's like one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Uh, it's got so much history right now. The sun doesn't set until 10 o'clock. These guys don't even eat dinner until nine. They get up at like noon. Um, so definitely a different type of lifestyle than the American work ethic. It sounds like you had fun. Oh, I had so much. Yeah, I had a great time. I mean, we did all the stuff that you would do on a, you know, touristy vacation we went to the cathedrals and um and all the plazas and the museums and stuff like that but um just in general the food uh was was incredible the the um the general atmosphere we mostly spent time in madrid as far as the major city go we weren't able to go to barcelona and then we spent some time in a town a little south of malaga which is on the spanish coastline uh but just in general i mean the food is just it's just incredible and they're you know, culture is pretty, pretty amazing and able to learn some stuff as well. So um, I can see, I can see why if I was in Spain, if I was John Rahm, I'd probably be taking it easy too. I'm not sure I'd fly up to Scotland uh, when you're. There's no need to torture yourself at the Scottish Open when you could just go hang out with your family in Spain for a week, practice somewhere at some private club and then show up ready to go at Royal Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, I don't think you need to be in Scotland and it's a, you know, pretty loaded field. So these guys have been playing a lot of these designated events. This is a, um, an event that is a partnership with the DP world tour. So some of these guys in the DP world tour will get the opportunity to show their stuff, even if they haven't been on the PGA tour as well. Um, so, you know, there's kind of a lot going on this week and I could see how someone like Rom might just say, Hey, let me take the week off and see if I can't win a major. Yeah. I think that's a hundred percent. it. Yeah. It's just take some time. It's been a busy season already for these guys. 